What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm out here this morning. I finally received the engine mounts for the dozer and uh, I'm not going to film putting these on because it's really a simple deal. I just got to uh, jack the motor up and put them in there. But uh, you have a, a little plate down in here as you see and I got to jack the motor up and uh, slip this in there and then set it back down, put the top piece on and the flat washer and the bolt and all that good stuff and do that four times. I got some new bolts as well, 5 8 by 5 inch, grade eight, uh, because the only thing, this bolt right here is really the only one that's tight. I have a bolt in the other side, but it's not tight because I don't have the proper nut on it and then the back has no bolts in it at all. So uh, I didn't have the engine mounts, they hadn't come in whenever I stuck the engine back in here. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna get that done, but in the meantime, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull this blade off of this thing, something I should have done uh, before I ever started on this project. But you know how that goes. I was kind of eager to get started and I was like, oh, well, I can work on it with a blade on it. But uh, I really need to take this thing off because I think I pointed this out in another video. I don't really remember, but if I did not, I'll point it out now that uh, if you look right here where the blade mounts to the undercarriage there, See all them washers and pieces of metal and whatever in the world they got welded on there. Um, it looked to me like the nut came off the bolt and it, uh, you know, it allowed the, the blade to go in and out right there, kind of while they're around. And they just kind of stuck some stuff down in there and, and welded it up to try to, uh, try to keep it from moving so much. But uh, as you can see here, the grousers have got into the C-frame on each side. And the, the blade is actually, because of the way they push that, push that over, the blade is actually shifted over to the other side of the dozer over there. And it's, it's right up against the grouser on that side. And I got a big gap over here. So uh, I need to find out what kind of parts I need right here. And uh, if I need to replace the pins, the bushing, uh, the bolt, the whole thing, whatever I need, um, I kind of need to get it apart so I know what to order. Um, I was going to just order everything down there, but this stuff is super expensive. Just for that bolt alone with no nut or wash or anything, it's like 350 bucks plus tax and shipping. And uh, then plus, the you know, you got a pin, you got the bushing in there, the bearing in there. You have washers, you have the nut. I mean, you could literally spend, like if you wanted to replace both sides, like 12 or 1500 bucks just to replace the, those bolts. And so uh, I need to get it apart and see what part I do need or what I don't need before I just uh, waste a bunch of money on buying you know everything there and it may not be nothing wrong with uh, some of what's there. So uh, anyway, it looks pretty simple. It's a two and a, two and a quarter inch nut on the back, back here. I got up under there and, and tightened it up some just to see what kind of slack I could take out, what it looked like. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna take those loose and we're gonna pull the pins here out, hopefully. We don't have any trouble. And it should be able to just take the two lines, those right here on each side. And uh, then we ought to pick this blade up with the tractor. I figure it's the easiest way to do it, seeing how they got this, uh, this frame built on top of it for pushing brush and stuff. And I got hay forks on the tractor that seemed to stick right through there because um, that's just the way I had to park the tractor to get both, uh, both pieces of equipment in this bay right here. So uh, I should be able to get up under there and just take those big nuts loose, pull these pins out, remove these hoses, take the tractor, pick the blade up, drive backwards, and get it loose that way. At least I think so. And that way I can take the blade um, outside, get it out of the way. This will also make it easier to, uh, to paint the machine as well and finish up some other stuff. And uh, you know, it just make things a lot easier to finish, finish the thing up, I believe. And uh, see what kind of parts I need and kind of get everything fixed appropriately. Um, after I get the blade and stuff done, I've got a, a fuel leak or hydraulic leak or maybe both back here in the back. And uh, we're gonna pull this thing outside. I've got the seat loose. We've got a new seat on the way. Um, but this plate right here where the battery box is, and I'll show this again when I get it outside and some more light comes out. You gotta pull the batteries and everything out. But there's a uh, diesel fuel leaking down in here somewhere. And the whole, uh, undercarriage of this thing up under here where the hydraulic uh, motors and stuff is at. It's just covered with uh, 
dirt and grease and stuff where everything is stuck to uh, the, the fuel leak, I suppose it is. Because I've had this thing sitting in the shop here and I had a clean floor and you can see it smells like diesel fuel. But we may have a hydraulic leak in there, a hose rubbing on something as well. So we're going to get it outside and uh, check that out also. Alright guys, hopefully you can see there. Here's the, uh, the bolt right here on the back side where that uh, comes in. I'm going to get up under the bottom of this thing with the Milwaukee three quarter inch impact. See if we can rip these things loose. All right, we got the right socket now, two and a quarter. there. Let's see if we can get the other side out. out. A three quarter there is stout. I hadn't really found anything yet that uh hadn't been able to get out with it. All right guys so there's the nuts off of the bottom and the washers. You can see this washer here is kind of cone shaped and it's kind of wallowed out on the inside. And that one's pretty well flat close to it. But uh anyway looks like somebody I don't know if somebody had this part, if it's been, just been loose that long and wallowed out. But either way, they're two and a quarter inch nuts. It looks like someone could have tightened that up instead of welding who knows what on here. But uh, we got that loose, so all we should have to do, take these bolts out, pull this pin out, and take these lines off, and probably secure this cylinder up some kind of way, tied up with something up here so that it's not just hanging. and. Uh, all that good stuff. Easy peasy. I'm about holding the cylinder up and get the shins out. One shin. Should be able to tie a ratchet strap or something around that and ratchet it up up there. Should be fine. It looks like they did a fairly good job at, at greasing that, keeping it greasy and everything. When I get the blade off, we'll check the uh, check and see if there is any play in that pin, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. Maybe a small amount, but small amount. You know, you can live with on on this part of the blade. Put that back in there just so I don't lose it. All right, guys, I've got everything disconnected. We're ready to uh, see if we can pick up and pull this blade back. Uh, the C-frame is going to hit the ground whenever we do this, but uh, that should be fine. It'll just be, we'll have to do something different when we go to uh, put it back together. Um, there's a couple of grease hoses on each side, one on each side that goes to this grease arc here goes down and greases this right here. Um, I don't know what the condition of those are. Let's see when we get them out. See if what the availability of them is and the cost of them are. Um, I don't see <laughs> where that's mandatory to have on there. It's not really any more difficult to reach over here with the grease gun right there and put it on a zerk than it would be to reach over here. You're gonna be up against the track regardless. 
Um, I don't know, that just seems like something to make the dozer cost more. But uh, anyway, we'll check it out when we get it off there. I've got to go get the key to the tractor and uh, we'll see what happens here. So the bolt on the other side over there is stuck in there where I took the nut off. It's froze up inside of there. And as you see, dozers don't have great traction on slick concrete. So I'm just kind of dragging it with a tractor. So yeah, I don't know. That's going to be a little bit interesting. I was afraid of that. This side over here is loose. It's moved forward. But the other side over there is froze up in there. Alright guys, I raised the blade up with a the tractor there and I stuck this uh, pipe and stuff up under the blade to keep it from digging in the ground. I got my chain run up under the blade and I've got it run back here to this uh, D-ring here that we might rip off. But I got it on this one side because this is the side that's stuck, the other side is loose. And I've got it, I'm going to hook it to the tractor right here, we're going to snatch on it and uh, see if it'll come loose.
Y'all remember me telling y'all them whales on that three ring one more time? Told you it wasn't whale today, girl. Guys, this is not working very well. Um, I've snatched the dozer all the way out the shop. You can see how far I've drug it out the shop here, and uh, this thing hadn't moved whatsoever. So I don't think it's going to. I'm gonna wind up breaking something if I keep on. I don't want to put any heat on that, and uh, you know I'm sure I could cut the thing out. But as I say, that bolt is 350 bucks plus tax, and if there's nothing wrong with it. You know, I hate to I hate to cut the thing out. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll leave it in there. The only thing I know to do is put these top pins back in up here so I can pick the blade up, hook the hoses back up, and uh, I can back the dozer back in the shop in here and pull this pin out on this side here and let the other one come out the way I got it because it's loose and uh, take it loose that way I guess and just leave this big bolt in here and leave it seized in there I mean I, I guess uh, that's it's gonna have to be cut out if, if it comes out and if I cut it out you know it's, uh, it's 400 bucks I don't really need to spend if it's nothing wrong with the if the eye of it's good All right, guys hopefully this stupid thing don't fall i got picked up here but um you can see all this garbage that they welded on here man I, I don't know i don't understand but uh it's actually it's a little slack in it it may be just a pin a little wearing the pin this pin here i don't think they're very expensive um we may can just replace this pin and I may can cut all this garbage that they got on here off and actually reuse this. Polish these threads up some. I don't know. Because as I say, this little bolt right here is 350 bucks. That does not include this pin. does not include the bearing or this hose or any of that. And uh, this hose is not in very good shape. I don't see any reason why we can't just unhook the thing. And put a uh, grease suck right there on it. I mean, you can get to it. It's not very much trouble. No more than what it would be. So, I may do that. This is the side here that I got out. Um, those bolts, the threads in that bolt hole is not very well. But, anyway, we got it out. They actually looked like they had cut this pin and did some welding or something. Tried to weld the pin. I, I don't know. I don't know what they had going on. Nothing good it doesn't look like. 
but uh, I'm going to take impact and zip this out so we can pull this pin and get this uh, bolt here out and figure out what I need to order if anything I think definitely these two pins <laughs> I don't know what they got going on not the right socket know that much I mean you're talking 350 for this bolt plus tax plus this inner bearing here I mean you're talking 450 bucks or whatever for that and instead of tightening the nut up you just weld garbage on it I don't get it but anyways I'll do that as I say this grease hose I'm not too sure about it I don't know that just I mean, it's not that hard to get to, you know, lean over and hook a grease gun up there. I don't see the point in that, really. But, uh, anyways, these up here look pretty good. Um, the pins, I did not see any any grooves in them, really. So, maybe maybe it won't come out that bad. I'm going to take this grease hose off of here. Take a gouging rod and cut this loose. Polish her up, and I think we can put this back in there. Polish these threads up a little bit. I got dirt all in them and stuff. We'll be good to go on that. That's going to allow us uh, a lot more access to get in here and uh, clean this up a little better like this right here that I couldn't really get to. And uh, allow us to put the, the front end and everything back on this thing. Get everything cleaned up a little better and uh, it'll make painting and stuff a whole lot easier as well. So I'm going to go set this blade down somewhere here and uh, out of the way I guess. And then we'll see what we got on this fuel leak back here. Guys, I've got everything set up. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start the welder up. We got the carbon out gouging set up, uh, rigged up, and I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can gouge all this off without gouging into the shaft here. And see if we can save this 400 and something dollar part or $500 part or whatever it is, time you get tax and shipping and all that on it. And uh, hopefully we can get all this mess cut off here and save it. up there pretty good I do believe that is going to work um, I might have to touch up just a little bit when it cools off a little bit so I can hold it a little better um, just to kind of square this up just a touch more but I just barely got into it just a little bit right there and that gouging rod but other than that it looks pretty good uh, the threads don't look bad at all it just got dirt in them um, so that thing should go right back up in there all right guys so i was able to locate some aftermarket uh bearings that go in here or bushings whatever you want to call them um it's actually kind of a bearing on this but uh i need to get this out and i've been beating on this thing for probably 30 minutes with a hammer uh right here top and bottom and uh I, i'm able to get it to twist just a little bit and i've been spraying some wd-40 on it i can't hit the end of the bolt because i'll mess it up and as i say this bolt's 350 dollars per side without the bearing inside of it but I've got some new bearings coming so I want to see if I can get this thing out of here and I've got the tractor behind this thing just how it wound up when I put everything in the in the shop last night picked everything up so I'm just gonna hook my truck up to it and I want to see if I can get a direct snatch on this now that I got the blade and everything out of the way I stuck a bolt through there hopefully to grab that chain and I don't really want to you know pull the dozer necessarily 
I just want to kind of get like a rolling snatch, like a slide hammer effect and see if I can, you know, if it'll loosen that up and I can get that thing out of there so that I'll be able to get those bearings out of there. So when the new ones come in, um, I should have everything I need to be able to get them put in there. Um, ordered a new pin as well. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hook my truck up to it and uh, we're going to give this thing a few snatches and see what we come up with. All right, guys. Well, snatching on this thing hasn't worked. Um, the only other snatching I could do would be, you know, put a chain maybe around this axle, tie the back of the dozer to a tree, and hook an 18-wheeler onto here, something like that. Stupid, but um, I've got a 20-ton air jack up under here with a block of wood pressing on it back there. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but we're going to see. These jacks ain't really made to work on the side, but... If you turn it right and you can get hydraulic fluid to the uh, to the motor there, it should. So let's see. I don't really want to be up under here. I don't know where I want to be, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get there <laughs> wherever that's at. Oh yeah. I think that's as far as we can go with it um, because I bet we're hitting our beam here. Yep. All right, so we can let the pressure off of that and I bet we can uh, snatch that thing out of there now. That jack sure is heavy to hold up there like that. So we may put our, our chain back on here and snatch it, see if, see if we can snatch it on out of there now because it's loosened, loosened up and it's almost out. So. on this dozer track Let's see if we can whack it with a hammer and jar it loose this is not real smart to be hitting hard and steel with a hammer because of that right there Well, we got the center out of it anyway. So now, probably what I'm going to do is crank up the welding machine and take a gouging rod and uh, do a little gouging right across here. And that thing will probably come out of there 
not only will we remove a little bit of the metal, we will, uh, the heat um, will help break it loose as well. I don't want to get too much heat in there because those bolts are hardened and everything, but anyways. we are ready for the new parts whenever they get here um, this one here where they welded all that mess on there you know it's missing the shoulder here where I had to grind it down but they kind of messed up the beam down there where it goes into anyways so um, I mean as long as it don't pull through there you know which it's not because you see it's got a shoulder there it should be okay um, the back of the beam is also messed up just a little bit um, where it was loose and walled around, so I ordered two two washers for uh, for each one of them, just in case I need them for additional spacing or whatever. Because remember that one washer was kind of cone shaped. Um, that's the reason why. But anyway, we got some new parts coming. I will uh, clean these up a little bit more and uh, get them polished up a little bit. Get them cleaned up. Get the nut on this one, the dirt out of threads, and all that good stuff. And uh, Whenever we get the the new ones in there, we'll be good to go. I need to dig the grease out of the grease cert holes there as well. That saves uh, 700 bucks, $350 a piece. 